Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, and today we're going to do kind of a stone knives for beginners video. And also, are stone knives good for EDC, everyday carry? So I do get a lot of people that see my stone knives that we make and use here at Hunt Primitive. They ask if you can actually use them, and absolutely, they are 100% for use. But I'd also have a lot of questions as to how to properly use them, how to sharpen them, what can they do? Can we baton with them? Can you chop with them? All kinds of stuff like that. So we're gonna go into this video, and even if you know quite a bit about stone knives, there's probably a few little pearls of information in here to help you guys out as well. But mostly this video is targeted at people. That this is their introduction to stone knives. So one of the very first things that you have to remember about the stone knives is that they are made of stone. And so stone, especially nappable stones, are very glass-like to some degree. So you're talking about obsidian, which is what this is, is a volcanic glass, so this is a glass, and it's gonna to act just like glass. So if you've ever had a sheet of glass, you know how easily, if you pry it, it's gonna snap. But it's very, very strong, long ways like this. So if you put your pressure down like this on it, then, it's actually quite strong, but if you try to pry with it, it'll snap in a second. And so you now something like this, which is chert or flint, as a lot of people know it by, is a little less glass-like, a little bit more stone-like, but it's still very, very slick, a very, very sharp stone, but it too will also snap. And so when we're using these, again, we can't really hit with them. It's like hitting with a piece of glass, essentially. So we can't, we can't baton. Yeah, when you have to think about primitive man using stuff like this, it was very, very effective for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. But the tools that we're using for chopping weren't these ones right here. So one of the other concerns with, say, having a stone knife is if you say you have a sheath for it, and even if you wear it on your hip, remember primitive man weren't jumping up into the cab of the jacked up pickup truck. And so if you wear this on your hip and you forgot that you had it on and you sit on it, you ever sit on your pocket knife a little bit and you're like, oops, and you just readjust it, pow, it'll snap right in half. So stone knives are not necessarily good for modern day, everyday carry because of that. People are very much used to uh, sto steel knives and how you can abuse them over and over and over. And so we have to put ourselves back in the mindset of primitive man when we're using a stone knife and say, it is a, it is a very delicate tool, but it's also a very effective tool. And it doesn't break that easily. I've gone through, I've been using this same, it's worn down quite a bit on the sides and we'll get to that. I've been using this one for well over a year now. And I have been sawing bone and antler and wood with it. And I mean, really abusing it and then resharpening it over and over and over. But because we use it correctly, we don't pry with it, we don't chop with it, we don't bang with it, we don't, you know, twist and torque with it. This is, it's more of a sawing motion or, you know, a cutting motion, and that's how these things are best used. And you can use them for your everyday tasks if you want. You can open boxes with them and packages and what have you. And like I said, I run mine with stone and bone. I mean, we're cutting bones with, with rock knives just like these. So now when it comes to resharpening, this one obviously is brand new. And then this is one that I've been using for, like I said, well over a year now. So when they're new, they start off more like this. Well, when the edge does get depleted, which it doesn't deplete that fast if you are using it on, you know, softer materials. But when you start cutting wood and bone with it, obviously that is when the edge does deplete. And it's a different type of edge. You know, it's not a straight slick edge like you would see on a steel knife where you know you have this one solid razor blade i mean we're looking at a napped edge that's the way you make stone sharp is to natch nap it and it has to have some degree of serrations and i usually like a pretty good amount of serrations especially for cutting flesh and then when you start running into cutting bone and antler or wood or whatever you can see a lot of the serrations get knocked down a little bit smaller but it's very much like a saw so that's what removes the material so, over a period of time, when it does dull out, it does need resharpened. Well, you can't resharpen it with your modern, uh, you know, grinding and, and sharpening stone techniques. The only way to sharpen a napped knife is to remove chips of flakes, and I will show you this here in a minute, off one side or both sides of the blade. And that gives it a fresh broken edge, and then 
gives you another new fresh cutting edge to start using again and it'll last for quite a while depending on what you're using it on and uh, so to sharpen that you can either go the more modern route with a copper flaker or if you want to go the real primitive route you go with a deer antler flaker all right then we sit right here on our lap like this i'll show you one on each side the deer antler flaker and then also the copper flaker so we'll lead off with the antler flaker it's a little bit tougher to do it's not too bad but essentially you're going to have to understand some of the the basic mechanics of flip napping where you're looking at little platforms and that's where you're going to remove a new flake so when you find one of these flakes, actually what you really want to do is set it to where the blade is secure. If you start twerking on the half, that's when you could potentially break the half loose, especially when you're up here trying to remove a flake. You could even potentially snap the knife blade off. So you set it up to where the handle is free, but the blade is very well supported on your leg. And then you take these little tiny chip flakes can hear those coming off and you don't want it to go you want it to go tick so if it's that means it's grinding and it's not going to give you a very sharp edge you can sharpen it some and it will grind a tiny bit but here we get one click is really what we want and we're doing this uh, the distance apart is about the same distance as the width of the tip of our flaker and so you can see it removes these little tiny flint chips just like that and that exposes a new fresh edge and that's what makes a stone knife sharp so for many thousands of years before the advent of metal this would have been the best knife you could put your hands on and we still use them a lot if you follow along with my channel we do a lot of work with stone knives Okay, so this side, now you don't have to sharpen both sides. Sometimes you may want to. You flip it over and you find another platform. And you have to be careful, obviously, if you do it one way. Like that. And you can remove those ones. And now we've got a new sharpened edge. It's pretty sharp compared to the other side. And that would be great, again, for sawing anything that we need to saw through or even cutting flesh. So now we'll go ahead and we'll nap the other side using the copper flaker. You'll see it comes off just a little bit easier. So if you're brand new to it, I do recommend picking up a copper flaker. And you can get all this stuff too, um, whether you want to watch my video on how to make this yourself, make your own stone knife, uh, which is another video that you should be able to find in my Stone Age series playlist or here on my channel could link it down in the description as well for you or if you do have a lot of interest in working with a stone knife and learning about it you can pick them up on my website huntprimitive.com and of course that'll be linked down in the description as well but you can see the copper flaker which you can find these under the flint napping tools section they remove flakes very very easily a little bit easier than the deer antler does Again, we're trying not to grind we just want one click and there you go so now it's sharp so it didn't remove a ton of material so it's not like we went from this great big blade we sharpened it once and now all of a sudden it looks like this it's it's over time and this knife has been sharpened probably well over a dozen times already probably maybe even more than that and that's because I've been using it very very hard on wood bone and antler but you have this one that I carry around in my quiver and I use it on um, flesh, you know, cutting animals up and skinning and I don't think I've ever resharpened this one. We just clean it off and uh, it's ready to go again for the next time. So depending on how you use it, the blades can last for a very long time, but do please go check them out if you would like to on my website, huntprimitive.com and then if you want to learn a little bit more on maybe how to make one yourself, check out the video that's down in the description.